greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. I've had a lot of comments recently on how quickly I paint miniatures. If you look at my Action Points episodes at the end of each month, you'll see I showcase all the miniatures that I've painted for that month. And uh, people say, oh, how can you possibly get so many miniatures done in a month? Well, trick number one is not to have children. I don't have to bring up children, so that gives me a lot of spare time. But I also have a lot of other tips that I've uh, developed over the years for painting miniatures quickly. And I'm going to share them with you today. In fact, today it's my top 10 tips for painting miniatures quickly. So let's get right into it. Now, of course, these are my techniques for painting miniatures. They may not apply to you. They might may not fit with your personality. Uh, the important thing is to do whatever you enjoy and paint them any way you like. If you want to spend more time on your miniatures, so be it. Go for it. Spend ages. Um, but I like to churn them out pretty quickly because I have a huge backlog of unpainted miniatures and I'm slowly working my way through them. Yes, believe it or not, I feel like I'm making tangible progress on getting all my miniatures painted. That amazing hallowed day that we all want when everything we have is painted, we buy a new game and we paint it. We buy a new game and we paint it. We buy a new game and we paint it. We buy a new game and we paint it. Oh, sorry, I got a bit locked into a, something there. Anyway, let's get on with the tips. The first tip is to make a list. Yes, I like lists. I like to have a list I can look at and work my way through. And when I finish the thing on that list, I like to tick it off or remove it from the list. It gives me a sense of satisfaction. It feels like I've achieved something. And also, instead of having this nebulous idea in my head that I have thousands of miniatures to paint, I can look at the list and say, oh, it's not that bad. There's only 40 items on that list. It's not so bad. I can get through that. So I highly recommend making a list. Not only making a list, but also prioritizing your list. So put the miniatures that you want to paint the most at the top of the list and the ones that aren't so important at the bottom of the list. Basically, the games that you enjoy playing the most and you would just love to see fully painted. Tip number two is to work out an order of painting. So I've just mentioned that you have a list, but you may not necessarily go from that list to top to bottom. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just look at a game and think, I really want to paint that game. I want to get it done. Uh, this has happened recently with some old games like Space Hulk and uh, the figures from Relic, for example. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever played Relic, but I've always wanted to paint those little busts that come in the game. So what I try to do is I paint things that come in, the brand new games. I try and paint the core sets of those, and then I go back and paint something old. So basically I have this rhythm where I get brand new games and I break the back of them by doing the core set. Now when I say that, if it's a Kickstarter and it's got core set and a lot of expansions, I don't bother to paint all the core set and the expansions in one go because that will take forever, but I definitely like to paint the entire core set so I get a lot of playability out of that game with painted miniatures. And of course if it's a normal game, just paint the normal game, you don't have to worry about expansions. So after I've got the new game and that's become my main project and I finish that off, I turn my eye to all the unpainted things. And this is where I usually go back to the list, of course. And I think, okay, well, I've got a priority on that list and usually I follow it, but if I feel like something else, I just grab it out of the list. And another way of doing this to make yourself a little bit feel better is to go for the low hanging fruit. And when I say that, I mean go for the painting projects that are easier or shorter than the large ones. The good thing about this is that you get them done and you cross them off your list and your list gets smaller and you feel a sense of achievement and it keeps you going. So if you always go uh, for the longer, harder projects all the time, you can exhaust your mental reserves of painting energy. So for example, I had something on my list which was uh, Conquest of Planet Earth. I got an expansion for that and there were just a four or five figures in that that needed to be painted. It's been unpainted for ages, so it was on my list. So when the time came to paint an old game, I just painted that one up very quickly. It didn't take any time at all. Crossed off my list, my list got smaller, and I felt a sense of satisfaction. And something that had been unpainted for a long, long time was now finally painted. So as you can see, I'm getting into all these psychological tricks to fool yourself uh, into having a sense of achievement and a bit of encouragement to keep going. Okay, let's start getting on to the practical stuff. Tip number three is organized workspace. Now you may be one of those people who works very well with chaos. I'm not, I like to be neat and organized. So I always 
make sure before a painting session that my workspace is very organized and everything I need is within reach. It makes it easier for me to paint and I don't waste any time. So this is the way I have my uh, area set up. Um, you may change this to whichever way you prefer, but I've got these paint racks, which I bought from a company called Back to Base X, and they keep all my paints organized. You can see they're roughly organized by um, spectrum of color, so I know where to reach for when I'm going for a color. I've got all the inks in one area. I've got my water pot and my paper towel to wipe my brushes on. I've got my brushes ready at hand, and I've got my wet paint palette, which is by Red Grass Games, and a very good palette it is too. Now, of course, before the painting starts, there is a certain amount of preparation. And one of those steps, especially if you're dealing with Games Workshop figures, is that you have to get them off the sprue and construct them. So that's the next tip. Now, of course, we all have to do this, but my advice is as soon as you get the game, put the figures together, because there is nothing worse than saying, I'm going to start a new project, going into the box and finding that before you even start painting, you have to construct them all and put them together and glue them together. I find that very frustrating. So what I like to do is pre-prepare all my figures. As soon as I get the game, I build them and that's the priority one job. And then I can put them aside and then when I'm ready to paint them, I come back and paint them. And that leads me to my next step, which is base and prime. Sometimes we feel like painting, sometimes we feel like prepping. And when I feel like prepping, I try and base and prime as many figures that I have as possible so they're ready for painting at that time when I feel like painting. So if you've got a new batch of figures, or indeed with any of your old figures that are still bare plastic, you can go back and texture the bases and uh, take them outside and spray uh, your prime on them, whether white or black, whatever you prefer. I prefer white. And then you can put them aside. You don't have to start painting them straight away. When you come back to start that project, the figures are all ready to go. They're based and they're primed and they're ready to rock. Now I have a basing tutorial on my channel where I use ground up kitty litter to uh, texture my bases. I found myself using Games Workshop's textured paint more and more because it's faster and easier, especially for smaller figures, it works really well. If I have a very large figure, I might go back to the uh, kitty litter stuff and the rocks but for small bases, the texture paint is ideal. So you've got all your figures with their base textures done, they're undercoated with the uh, spray prime, they're ready to go. Now, at this point, you don't have to go on to painting them, you can just put them aside. My point is with all this is that when you feel like painting, you can go back to any of these figures, old or new, and they're ready to paint. You don't have to go through all the preparation stages beforehand. I find this really satisfying because I'm ready for a project, I grab it, I start painting. And when I feel like doing all that prepping stuff, I can do that when I feel like doing it. So let's get on to the painting. Step number six is to base coat and wash first. Now again, this is my personal preference and other people might not like to do it this way. But what I like to do is get a batch of figures together and I do all the base coats for them first, let that dry and then do all the washes next. So instead of taking two or three figures and doing base coating and washing and highlighting to a finished state, I separate these steps and get them all done at once. So for me, this speeds things up considerably. Uh, to putting down all the base colors on figures is pretty quick and easy to do. You're really just filling in shapes with color. Then you pick the appropriate washes to give them uh, a nice bit of shading. And when that's all totally and utterly dry, you can sit down and do the highlighting phase on all those figures. And I find this really satisfying because I pick up figures that are almost finished. They look good. And I just give them that highlight pass and they come to life because of course the highlighting gives it that full on 3D feel because it's the um, accentuated highlights that give a tiny figure the feeling of being a normal sized person or creature or whatever. And it feels like it's faster to do. Once the base coat and wash is done and you're just doing highlighting, you feel like you're churning through the figures really, really quickly. Again, it's a little psychological trick to make you feel like you're working faster than you are. Step number seven, it's a pretty well-known one, and that is do all of your colors at once. So for example, if you've got a whole batch of figures and you start to paint red on one of those figures, do all the reds through that batch of figures. This really saves a lot of time dipping into and out of different paint pots, opening them, closing them, and doing all that kind of stuff. If you get all that color done at once, you can scoot through that whole series of figures that use that color and then get onto the next color and go through all the figures and do those, etc, etc. It speeds up things considerably. 
It also saves you a lot of time washing your brushes between different paints and uh, make sure you don't have a lot of paint pots sitting around open and possibly drying as you're painting other colours. Of course the tip that goes along with this is to get yourself a wet palette. They're absolutely essential for miniature painting. I've got mine from Redgrass Games and it's great. It'll keep your colours nice and wet for a long time so you can paint a whole lot of figures with that colour and uh, you won't uh, waste your paint. But some of you may be bored by painting um, and find it a little bit tedious. In that case, my next tip will be very useful. Tip number eight, and that is to always paint with a podcast or a book going. Um, this makes the time pass. One of the great things I find about painting figures is that I can completely turn my brain off. I don't really have to concentrate. So I can give my full attention to listening to an audio book or a podcast. And I find this very relaxing. So my body is doing something as it paints, my mind is listening to something else. And this makes the time pass quickly and makes the whole experience much more enjoyable. So whether you prefer to listen to music or whatever, just put on something to listen to to make the time pass a little bit faster and to make the whole experience a bit more enjoyable. Okay, we're getting to the end stretch now. Tip number nine is paint until it looks good. Now, we all have the tendency to obsess about detail. Well, I say all of us, but most of us probably because we're in this particular hobby and we enjoy it so much. And it certainly has a slight obsessive element to the whole thing. Something you'll understand if you understand the esoteric order of gamers. But when it comes to painting, sometimes near enough is good enough. Remember, you're going to be seeing those miniatures from a bit of a distance. They're going to be down on the table. and They're not going to be right up next to your eyes. So. Once it does look good from a slight distance, that's probably good enough. You really don't have to obsess about perfectly blended highlights. You don't have to worry about incredible fine detail. Really just make it until it looks good. And you'll be surprised sometimes how good they can look without obsessing about the fine detail. Now, if you're painting for a showcase for competitions like this, of course, it's a completely different story. But for board games, you really don't have to go to all that effort. You'll find that the miniatures look great. You're playing with them. You're playing with the game and it, you never actually go back and think, oh, if only I'd just done a little bit of more work on that scabbard, on the dagger, on the, th you know, it doesn't happen. You're on to the next thing. So I really recommend that you get to a certain point where you think, yep, that looks great, fantastic, finish, move on to the next thing. And you'll find that your painting goes a lot faster. And finally, my friends, we come to the last tip, tip number 10 of my top 10 tips. Whew, say that 20 times fast. And that last tip is cross it off your list. Yes, go back to that list you made at the start and delete that item from your list and feel the rush of happy endorphins go through your body as you enjoy the achievement of finishing another project and getting that little bit closer to painting all your miniatures. I really hope these tips have helped you out in that goal. We can all do it. We don't have to languish in a world of unpainted miniatures. Get into it. Enjoy it. And thanks for watching. You've been watching Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. Thanks very much for your support. I really appreciate it. See you next time.